And now let's go to the real part. Because we start asking real questions, or you can just start asking me questions, and I, can, I start answering it. So this is a, a very simple interface here. What are we searching? We are searching for cells in hundreds of medium cells that express CD3D, CD8A, and not express CD4. So this is the result. It, re it turns you how many? Seven, 677 studies. Now, let's make the question a little bit more difficult. Let's try to search for the same thing. But let's try to explore the breast cancer, any breast cancer data set here. So the good thing is that we have all the metadata standardized. So now you can go and search for tissue and you search for breast cancer. Breast, sorry. And you can search for it. You can combine the search with genes and metadata. Now you can search and you found a cell, a single study. Imagine that you're having this single study. In this study, it is actually a single cell map of intertumoral changes during anti pd one treatment of patients with breast cancer. Let's focus on T cell. Uh, let's ask a question. We have T cell here. We have, um, let's say, sampling time point and say respond to treatment or not. Okay. This is um, on treatment and clonal expansion versus non-response. Let's search for a gene that the authors report that in T cells, the uh, BD, uh, CD1 actually express more than in, in T cells of the patient that respond to, to treatment. And uh, let's search for it. And you can see, oh, this, this, this makes sense, right? The non-response. The, the gene doesn't express so much. And let's focus on the fibroblast. And now we can ask the question, a more interesting question, whether there's any difference in the fibroblast of the patient that responds to treatment versus non-respond to treatment. And let's say uh, time bond and respond to treatment. And we can say, okay, what are the difference in the fibroblast? This is clonal expansion. This is, I say, response. And this is the second one, is the non-response group. Non-response. And I say, and you can see quite a lot of marker genes here that CXCL11 uh, chemokines uh, genes here attracting T cells coming to the fibroblast in the case that it responds to treatment. And then it, it raises another question. Well, this is one data set, right? Can you combine all the fibroblasts in cancer and tell me what is the pattern? In order to have that ability, you, have, you need to, to have the ability of finding all fibroblasts in cancer. How would we do that? Let's try to do it again, a study. Let's go to filter. What do we want? We want cell type, fibroblast. We want the condition to be a neoplasm of epithelial tissue. We, what we want, a sampling site to be adjacent normal and primary tumor. Now we ask question. What are the differences between fibroblasts in, at the primary tumor versus the adjacent normal site? You can search. It returns 55 studies. Let's combine all these guys together into one silico study and to see what is happening. Create a custom data set, fibroblast in cancer. Okay. And done. And this is fibroblasts. Let's switch to signature genes. Let's try to find the signature genes between sampling site, between the primary tumor versus adjacent normal tissue. And let's change the parameter a little bit. Let's find signature genes. 
And if you look at it, you can see some genes, very interesting gene here, postin. This is the FAP, fibroblast-associated proteins here. And which is reported in a lot of places. And there are a lot of other genes that are not reported. And the question there is, now this is not from a single study. This is a combination of multiple studies. This is the fibroblast activated proteins, right, at the primary tumor. Let's try to search for that gene, FAP. You search for a gene, you know that it expresses quite so, a few in fibroblasts. But let's click on 10x vision. Now it is on the slides from 10x vision's data here. You can see on the left, actually two parallel panels. On the left is the hist histology image. On the right is the histology image superimposed by the expression read. Let's go to one more. This is uh, in the press. I'm trying to explore this a little bit. So this is the cancer part. This is an, probably another cancer part here. Okay. And let's search for the gene 5, FAP. And let's increase the obesity a little bit more so that we can see. So there are quite a, a few here. So this drives me to ask questions uh, about the my calf and ICAF, they're actually two important uh, cancer-associated fibroblasts. And the uh, marker genes for my calf is ACTA2, two, two, I think. So you can see this region of cancer is not, doesn't express the uh, my calf signatures, while at the same time, in this region, my calf actually expressed a lot, which is represented cancer-associated fibroblasts. And very interesting when you when you search for CD3D, you can see here a lot of T cells can infiltrate, cannot infiltrate. And on 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 the other side, in the absence of my calf, T cells can infiltrate a lot in the place. This is Visium technology. Where's Xenium? Well, Xenium is here. This is another study in breast cancer as well. The same patterns actually appear, but this, this round, you have the single subcellular expression of that. And I think this is a century of accelerated biology, also the century of accelerated computing and allow scientists to have the power to be able to analyze their data in combinations of all existing data in the world in real time.